We're going to put these in just like we normally would. The fraction template does not work on the when you're entering uh, the building the matrices, when you're entering the entries into the matrices. So if we go second matrix, we'll just call these. Remember that when we're subtracting matrices, we're just going to enter the matrices, in this case is A and B, and then subtract matrix B from matrix A, right? So we'll just go to the matrix menu. Where do I go to, to build a matrix? Edit. edit. We'll edit matrix A to be what dimensions? Two by three. Two rows, three columns. Okay, now here's how you put in fractions. So like, for example, that first one is a negative five-thirds, right? So I'm just going to say negative five divided by three. And it just looks like a fraction written horizontally, doesn't it? Watch what it does when I put it in there. It puts it in as a decimal. That's okay. It looks like it rounded it, but it did not. It kept that out to like 15 decimal places, and so it, it actually didn't round it. When you're editing the matrices, though, it always looks like it did. So just go ahead and, and enter this whole thing as matrix A. When you're done, just go ahead and, and enter that as matrix B. Remember, you got to quit first. You got to quit and then go back to the matrix screen. Edit two to get to B. So when you're done with it, I'll give you a second to finish that up. Does yours let you put them in there? Yeah. They all do. The what? Serious? <laughs> Okay, hey, stop target. Listen, now just because, hey, 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 just because I drop my attention for a second up here doesn't mean we got to start talking. Right, we don't want to waste more time. Evidently, the new, the fancy new, what are the 84Cs, TI-84Cs with the color, they do let you actually enter fraction templates in there. So I was, I didn't know that. So, but we don't, for the rest of us, uh, we don't need to. I'll show you. There's a trick. Okay, so assuming everybody's got those in, then all we have to do is pull up, go to the matrix screen, pull up matrix A, subtract matrix B. And I get that ugly result with all those decimals. But watch this. Here's the trick. Okay, just like we can do with numbers, when we want to turn a decimal number into a fraction, we can do the same thing with matrices by just going to the math screen, choosing the first option, convert to fraction. And then it says, answer converted to fraction. That's what we want to do. So we just hit enter. So math, enter, enter, and look what it does. It makes them all fractions, which is good. Because notice what the what Moodle is expecting you to do. It wants you to write all matrix entries as simplified fractions. Can you see that? I'm going to make it a little bigger. Yes. You know, it's like it's like okay, the other question then is, uh, people had, that I, I realized I never even showed you, is how do you input a matrix into Moodle? This is really cool. If you go down here to this editor and you pick the matrix with parentheses, 
template. Look what it does. It pulls up this little, okay, and, and look, look what this lets you do. You can go down and manually type in the number of rows and columns, but why would you do that when you can just choose, like, I want that look. I want two rows, three columns, and it builds that template for me. And then if I need to put in fractions, just put that. Yeah, then I can just put in, I can use the fraction template to actually put fractions in as entries. Okay, make sense? Okay, we good? All right, so, so that's that one. Now try this one. should do uh, with this problem right here. You probably should, when you input matrix A and matrix B, you, it's probably a good idea to call them up and just see if they if they really are what you intended them to be. So just hit matrix A, enter, and it'll show you a nice little compact on your calculator. Little matrix where you can see it all on one screen. Okay. So what about these? Now, this is the one where uh, where you're supposed to be, you're supposed to solve this linear system. And I, I Directions you can't see them, but all they say is solve the linear system, and if there's a single solution, enter the values in the ordered triple down here. So just the x, y, and z. Uh, if there is not a single solution, if it says, you know, if, if there are no solutions, enter ns. If there are infinitely many solutions, enter im. Uh, but we're going to look at one first where there's a single solution. Okay. So do you remember what we said yesterday about this? How do we put this into our calculator? Okay. okay, good. Yeah, it's got to be in standard form. So in our calculator, we have to have it set up where we have column one is going to be x's. In this case, we have three variables, x, y, and z. Column two is y's. Column three is z's. And then there's a fourth column for the constants on the other side of the equal sign, right? Okay, so let's let's put these in. You tell me what I'm gonna what I'm gonna put in for row one. So let's build this matrix. What are the dimensions gonna be? Three by four. Three by four. Good. So we'll edit matrix A to be a three by four. Three. Okay. And what's the first row going to be? The top one here. Okay. So I, I remember, I'm just putting in the coefficients, no variables. I'm just putting in the coefficients and then the constants. So the co remember, the first is the x column. So the coefficient of x is what? Three. three. Okay. The coefficient of y is four. Four. What's next? One. Zero. Yes, right? It's got to be zero because there's no z there. And so that means if, if, a, if a term is missing, it must be being multiplied by a coefficient of zero, right? So we got zero for z and then negative two. Okay? So keep going. Go ahead and put this whole thing in there. Once you get the whole matrix in there, do this. Quit and just hit second matrix one and enter to, to display the matrix and just check it and see. So three, four, zero, negative two. That looks good, doesn't it? Yep. Okay, so that, that looks good. Now, what was the trick for solving this thing? Remember? Okay. Okay, Dylan, that's the idea. Dylan, go ahead. Press second matrix. Okay, good. Scoot to the math menu. 
Okay, so we, then we'd either scroll up or down to B, or we can just type in a B, because it, it's row B is the one we want. It's R R E F. So I'm just going to skip down. I'll hit alpha B. And you could just toggle up or toggle down, either way. That's what you get, R R E F. What that means, remember, is reduced row echelon form. So we can solve a system, a linear system, on a, on a a in a matrix by just putting the matrix into reduced row echelon form, and it will tell you the solutions. Now, we're not going to do all the, the tricky algebra. We're going to let the calculator do that. What do I have to put in the parentheses? Okay, so matrix A, so second just matrix. Highlight it and take it What's that? You should just like highlight it and take it. Does that not work? Uh, I don't think that'll work. I don't think it'll work. Okay, if I hit enter then, look what it does. It gives me back the answer. But now, how do we interpret this? So watch very closely, because this is where people can get confused. It's very simple if you kind of know how to, the strategy for reading this. Okay, we're always going to get back a 3 by 4 What you always do, or excuse me, a 3 by 4 if we started with a 3 by 4 But you're, I'm going to give you some where there are going to be bigger systems that have more than three variables. So, for example, what if we had W's, X's, Y's, and Z's? Then we'd end up with a 4 by 5 right? No matter which, how it is, it's always going to be an augmented matrix, meaning it's always, it's always going to have one extra column, one more column than row, than rows, right? Cover up the last column, and what you've got left is the coefficient <coughs> matrix, right? Then it's always just going to be the coefficients of the variables. If when you do that, it has this look, this is, this is the pattern that you see when there is a single solution. It's always this pattern. Notice that from the top, or top left to the bottom right, it's just going to be a diagonal of ones, and everything else is a zero. That really is just an identity matrix, but we won't get into that right now. If it has that look, that is telling you there is a single solution, and these are the answers. The first variable, in this case x, is 2. The second variable, in this case y, is negative 2. And the third variable, in this case z, is 1. And so that's what we would enter into Moodle, and we would be correct. Okay, as we see, that's going to that's gonna be the right answer. Okay, we got it. Good. Now, try this one. I'm going to change this a little bit. Try this guy. Actually, let's do one of these. Okay, try that one, please. Solve that system. Yeah. <laughs> You're supposed to. So our matrix, then, let's pull this one up. I'll quit. I'm just going to go up and, and cheat. I'm going to go up and see. You can do this, too. I'll just go up and grab matrix A. Hit enter. Okay. That's what it should look like. Okay. No, no. That, that's, I just, that's what matrix A should look like. Okay, so now what about the answer? Okay, what, this, is, this is the part I really want you to see. And, and if yours didn't, if you got something messed up, that's okay. Just watch mine. It's fine. It, I mean, it's, you just type something in wrong. No big deal. So if I do RREF, 
for matrix. I, I just scrolled up because I'd already used it once. But you can always just go back and get it from the matrix menu too. But you, got, you know how to do that, right? You can, if, if I want to co cut and paste something I've done earlier, or copy and paste, I can just roll up and highlight it and hit enter, and it copies it and pastes it down to the edit bar, right? So it's not going to be the same A as before. No, it won't be, but it, exactly, it won't be the same A as before, it'll just be whatever A is currently in there, okay? All it's doing is it's pasting the operation, not the answer, okay? So notice this is different. Is that what you got? Okay, this is really interesting. This tells you a lot of information. Everybody, please pay attention to this, because I don't want to have to say this a million times. Okay, so if I cover up the last column, that is not the pattern that tells us single solution, is it? Right? It's not a diagonal of ones and zeros everywhere else. So that is telling you this is not a single solution. It is either no solutions or infinitely many solutions. Here's how you tell. So if it's not the single solution pattern, then you cover everything up and look except the bottom row, and you look only at the bottom row. If the bottom row says something false, it is no solution. If it says something true, it's infinitely many solutions. Okay. So what does it say? It says 0x plus 0y plus 0z equals 0. Is that true? Yes. That is true. It's infinite. 0 equals 0. So that is infinitely many. Now, the other way it could look, if it's the other type of answer, it would be like zeros, all zeros, and then a one. And that would be false. And that's telling you that it's no solutions. I don't, for you guys in this class, I'm fine. I'm just really expecting you to just put in either NS or IM. Okay? I made the honors class do something more than that. And if there are any of you that are interested in doing this, I will show you. In fact, I'll, I can show you right now. And I can even put up some practice problems for you to do. No, I mean, it's just, it's not a big deal, but it's, it's kind of cool what this does. Uh, it just, think about it, hear me out for a second and, and just, uh, you know, mollify the teacher here. And, and, and listen to what, listen to this and tell me you don't think this is kind of cool. So we said that, remember when we had lines, we were graphing linear systems involving x's and y's. We just had two lines on the x-y plane. And either we had a single solution where the lines crossed, right, or we had no solutions because the lines were parallel, or we had an infinite number of solutions because the lines completely overlapped, right? But if the lines completely overlapped, we actually knew something more than just that there was an infinite number of solutions. We knew that the solutions were every point on the line, right? So we have an equation that tells us, you know, it, it's not just anything goes. There are infinite number of answers, but they all have to fit the pattern of that linear equation, right? So, for example, there are an infinite number of, of points on that, that intersect, but for any x that I choose, I could plug that x value into the linear equation and find the y value that goes with it, right? The same thing can be true for bigger systems. Now, think about this one just for a second. You can use your imagination a little bit on this. When I have a three variable and three unknown, the three by three linear system, so I'm in the, the variables are x, y, and z. Now, each of these rows is not a line anymore. It corresponds to a plane. Okay? So literally, these are planes floating in a space instead of lines embedded on a plane. Okay? So it's a three-dimensional x, y, and z space. And let's just take this example. Think of these three planes. We're gonna, I'm going to give you a visual example of a system that has an infinite number of solutions. Okay, the front wall, the extension of the front wall is one plane, infinite plane. The extension of the ceiling is another infinite plane. Would you agree that those two planes meet in that, that line, that goes infinite line, that joint up there, right? What if there were a third plane that we oriented so it, we kind of held it up so it cut, it knifed right through that? And, and, and it shared the same intersection. All three of those planes then would, would you know, they would, they would share that infinite line for an intersection. Uh, that would be an infinitely many kind of answer, wouldn't it? But there's more to it than just saying infinitely many. Sure, that's, that's sort of a qualitative answer that tells us, yeah, there's an infinite number of points, but it's not quantitative. It doesn't tell us how are they defined or, you know, how are they constrained? What, what's the equation that tells us what they could be? This actually tells us that. Here's how you can interpret this. If you look at that, uh, the, the first row we'll assume is for defining x. The 
The second row is for defining y, and the third row is for defining z. Okay? So what this is telling us is that z could be anything. And so the answers, if we were going to write this out as a system, here's how we would write it. z equals z. That's kind of a weird answer, but what that tells us is z is a free variable. It could be anything. There are an infinite number of possibilities for z. There's no limit. Okay, what does this second line tell us? Well, if I write that second line out as an equation, isn't that just saying uh, 1 times y plus 4 times z equals 2? Right? If I solve that for y, isn't that just y equals 2 minus 4z? There's the equation for y. Whatever value of z that we pick out of the infinite possibilities, y has to be 2 minus 4 times that choice. Okay? What about the first line? Isn't that first line just telling us 1 times x uh, plus 7 times z equals negative 9? So if I solve that for x, isn't that saying x equals negative 9 minus 7z? So once again, based on whatever value we pick for z, this tells us the value of x that we would have to, to, have to end up with. Okay? Taken all together, that just represents some infinite space. In this case, it's a line. It's just an infinite line that's, that's not on the xy plane. It's just kind of going through the three-dimensional space, like a laser beam traveling through space. But that's where all the, the planes meet. Okay? Does that make sense? Sort of, kind of, maybe? Okay. All right. We're good. Okay. You don't you don't have to do it that way, but if you want to, you can. Okay.